Hi, I'm James Hamilton from Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. A lot of folks use iron-on edge banding to cover the edges of their plywood panels. I do a fair amount of it myself. But off-the-shelf edge banding isn't for every project. Take this walnut credenza, for example. You can buy walnut edge banding, but it may not match the solid walnut lumber you're using for the rest of the project. The solution is to make your own edge banding, and in this video, I'll give you a few tips to help you do it. First of all, make it nice and thick. Thin edge banding is more likely to chip off over time. I like to make mine about a quarter inch thick. That'll produce a durable edge that will take some abuse. Make sure your mating surfaces are perfectly smooth so you'll have an invisible seam. That means sanding or planing both the hardwood strip and the edge of the plywood you're going to attach it to. While a drum sander is nice, you don't need it. A high quality saw blade and good technique will produce glue ready surfaces. Now this may mean using two different blades. An 80 tooth blade is essential for clean cuts across the grain of plywood, but a 40 tooth ATBR blade will produce the glue ready surface you need when you're ripping your solid hardwood edge banding. I highly recommend you watch our table saw video series, particularly part two about making clean rip cuts and part five about working with plywood. It'll give you some tips you can apply to this edge banding project. I'll link to that in the description below this video. If your plywood edge feels a little bit rough, you can sand it, but use stiff sanding blocks and apply even pressure to keep the edge straight and flat. Apply the glue evenly as well. You don't need too much, we aren't creating a structural joint, but you do want it spread out across the entire edge of the plywood. If your edge banding is thick and your mating surfaces are smooth, you shouldn't need clamps to secure it while the glue dries. Simple strips of tape are faster, cheaper, and I think a lot easier. Note how the edge banding is slightly wider than the plywood is thick. By letting a little bit of hardwood hang off on either side of the plywood, you can trim it perfectly flush with the surfaces when it's dry. For that task, I made a simple jig from a couple narrow pieces of plywood. This is clamped to the panel so that the high edge of the jig is even with the surface of the edge banding. This provides support for the base of your router to keep it from tipping as you trim the edge banding flush with the surface of the panel. Now as you trim each side of the banding, be sure you're cutting with the grain. This might mean moving the router from left to right on one side and right to left on the other in what's considered a climb cut. But since you're removing very little material, there's no danger making a climb cut like this. If you don't cut with the grain, you risk tearing out or splintering the edge banding like this. That'll ruin your day for sure. There are of course other ways to apply shop made edge banding, including using router bits to create a profiled mating surface. If you'd like to learn more about that, I'll put a link below this video to another one we made a while back. I've been a proud Tormic user for years. I've never seen so many clever innovations from just one small company, and the quality is simply uncompromising. Even if you're not in the market for a new sharpening system, you should check them out and see what they have to offer at the link below this video. There's a reason they're regarded as the best of the best. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.